Hey guys, so um, this is my first installment of a vlog ever, um, but I did want to give you guys some insider kind of behind the scenes of our trip to South Carolina for the Life is a Classroom um, class. It's like a course that they're having at the University of South Carolina, and they're doing this big event, this kind of like end of semester thing, and a bunch of us creators are are going so i'm super excited this will be the first time that i've ever met jesse in person i know growing up we were told like not to meet strangers on the internet but i guess that happens in 2024 so um i'm so excited to meet jesse um and guys it's been crazy like i just wanted to give you the behind the scenes of like what it's like to be a content creator during the release of tortured poets department um first i am so privileged I just want to get that out of the way. This is the biggest blessing, you know, especially with the South Carolina event. This is self-funded. Like the university is not paying for us to be there. Or we're not getting paid or anything like that. So there are so many blessings that I cannot count. So I want to just start this video with that because I'm sure throughout the week as we're vlogging, we're going to complain about stuff. And I just want you to know that that's just coming from a place of information overload and trying to figure out how do we do the best work for our followers and for the listeners because ultimately that's that's the pressure, that's the stress, but like it's so rewarding and it's absolutely worth every minute of it, every dollar we spend. Like this is going to be an amazing week and I'm really excited to take you guys along the journey. Um, so first I'm at an airport kind of whispering into my microphone. So maybe I'll turn up the volume on you when I edit. Um, and my flight board's here in about 15 minutes. So I'm going to give you probably five to 10 minutes here. And then I got to go grab a snack, go pee and get on my flight. So I'm in a layover city right now. I'm in Washington, D.C., which is honestly one of my personal favorite cities. I love visiting it besides the whole like capital aspect of it and like the museums and stuff. It's just like a really great city for like restaurants and just kind of bouncing around if you just have a weekend free. Um, so <laughs> I woke up this morning. I was supposed to get up at like five o'clock and I woke up at 530. I had to leave for the airport by six and I was up till 3 a.m. last night. So <laughs> I got, I'm running off like fumes right now and then Tortured Poets. So this is Wednesday. So Tortured Poets comes out tomorrow night, like Thursday night. Technically it's Friday, but we are going to be pulling all nighter tomorrow night. So I better get like at least three or four hours of sleep tonight, <laughs> hopefully, because um, we're going to be, we're doing like this Eric's tour movie thing, like with the students, like there's a jam packed week. So, all right, quick switch of pace here because somebody went and sat right next to me. I'm actually in the international leg of this airport. I passed it on my way to my gate and I was like, perfect. There's nobody around. Um, but I must have chosen the most beautiful window because these ladies just came and started talking right next to me. I'm like, damn it. So. Um, anyway, Jesse and I were filming last night. We had the episode for part four of the masters, which is something that we started weeks ago and we were supposed to be done by now. But the situation with Jesse's dog and Hazel going to the emergency vet, like we were behind a week. And so we were like, we have to get this lyrical analysis part four of the master's saga out before Tortured Poets, because ultimately that's not content that's going to be relevant after we hear Tortured Poets and after we know the lyrics and so we wanted to make sure we like stamped in time that lyrical analysis based on what we knew at the time and there were storms <laughs> in jesse's hometown we had so many situations like at one point her microphone like cut out and it was like staticking and i just kept feeling like it was such a bad omen and that like god was telling us that we are not supposed to record that episode um but we pushed through and i'm editing it right now i started it on this last flight and then i'll finish it on the second flight to columbia um, and what's so funny is the uh, seat that I'd booked was next to a family. So they had asked the like airline if um, they can bump me. And so I got my name called like up at the gate. They were like, can you please come up? And I was like, fuck, what did I do? Am I going to be able to go? Um, and they basically just gave me the exit row for free, which was nice. But I need the tray table. Like I was like, oh, yeah, no problem. And then once I got there and started thinking about it, I'm like, OK, there's no tray table in the exit row because it's way, you know, it's probably dangerous. But it's like the leg room is so big. And um, so I was basically like editing like awkwardly on my lap. <laughs> So um, I got off the flight and so many people messages, like so many. Apparently Taylor posted to YouTube, like 
oh my gosh, there's so much, but I don't want to spend too much of this video talking about the things more just kind of like the behind the scenes and like get you guys an insider's look and like what Jesse and I are going through this week. <laughs> it's again, privileged, privileged. We are so privileged, but this is overwhelming to a point of like almost mental breakdown. Like, I'm not going to lie. And so I've just decided I can't. Like, I can't take it in. Like, things are coming at me like a revolving door. People are messaging me, and I fucking love it. I appreciate every single person who is sending messages, who is sending links to stuff, who is summarizing what has happened for us. Um, but it's just like information overload, information overload. And we have Friday's episode ready to go. We interviewed with KJ Miller like last week. So we were like finally ahead of things. But then with the part four of the masters, we we're supposed to film that this weekend. We pushed that. We, you know, there's just been so much. And so the fact that we did that episode recording last night, I'm editing it today. I need to post it today because once we're in South Carolina with the other creators, like we're not going to be stopping to edit like or do really anything. Like we're going to be capturing a ton of content and maybe posting one off to TikTok, but I'm not going to have like an hour of undivided attention where I could just be at my laptop. Um, so <laughs> jury's out on whether that's going to actually get up, but I definitely think it will. I think it will. So um, if you haven't seen the master series part one through four, they will be up on TikTok before this video. That's for sure. Um, so yeah, I have to hop on my next flight. I had a very short layover, but I wanted to just start this vlog and get you guys on the journey with us. I will try and record Jesse and I meeting for the first time. I think that will be really fun. Um, and yeah, we'll move along. So here I am grabbing snacks. This is what I got. The airport was crazy busy, so I had to make do. And then look, it's like flying private. Oh my gosh, I've never really boarded a plane like this. But uh, tiny, like look at this. I was in a little single seater, which I didn't mind obviously, but I did have a tray table, thank God. And then here I am doing selfie mode because I think my Beats headphones are so freaking cute and I definitely would recommend them. And then truly, is it even a vlog if you don't get yourself taking off and landing in an airplane? I mean, I feel like that's like a non negotiable So here I am landing in South Carolina. All right, so I thought I just lost my bag. I just found it. Um, I had to go up and talk to airline support. And then by the time she came down, it was like sitting at the conveyor belts, even though everyone was long gone. And so, of course, I like raced down here and my backpack was unzipped. So then I heard a pin hit the floor and I was like, shit, one of my pockets is unzipped. And then I looked in his pocket that I had my medicine in. And then my medicine was missing. Um, but luckily, a really nice woman was right behind me. And she, like, handed it to me. Thank God. Um, I am not done with my podcast. So we were editing the fourth installment of the Masters. So that is not done. Um, that flight was very short. Um, so I probably still have another 30 minutes of footage to edit, which means, like, another at least hour and a half if I'm, like, really rushing. Um so that's exciting, but I need to calm down because Jesse's going to be here um, probably in the next 10 to 15 minutes, so. Okay, I'm not looking at you. Hold on. Okay, hi. Okay. Oh my god, sorry. I'm so thank you. Oh, that's cute. Thank you. Oh, we're the same height. Okay, ready? <laughs> what? <laughs> there we go. So that was Kate. She is the professor of the class at the University of South Carolina. She dreamt up this entire deal um, and, of course, was so gracious to pick us up, drive us around. And the little neighborhood we got our Airbnb in is absolutely beautiful, like very historic homes. And, oh, my gosh, it is the cutest. Here's the Airbnb before it's messy. Get a little shot. And the shower comes from the top <gasps> and the sides. Dude, this is like a hundred bucks a night, like for each of us. Yes, it was like, and I no, it was money still. Look at that. Oh, you know what? Those are not stained glass. That's probably like the film. Right. Okay, so someone is in here. I don't know who it is. If it's Nikki or Ty. 
Smell the clothes. No, Is it okay, but it was honestly shocking to walk in and see these beautiful pieces. So this one's partway done. This is Hannah Michelle who's made these. There's other costume designers we'll show later in the video. They all do beautiful work. But look at this piece she's been commissioned to make. It is so perfect. I can't. I bought these are so good. Okay, I'm going to take Courtney's yes. back over. All, like, I will see you all at dinner. Okay. All right. So here I am looking fly and fresh because Kenzie let me borrow this Midnight's uh, piece. It's from the Era store. Uh, it's obviously a recreation. And then this beautiful photo of Jesse and I that Jojo was so kind to take. Here we are walking into the theater. Um, so it was this little tiny theater. It's called the Nickelodeon Theater. Um, I think it only had a few screens. It was really unique, and it was in downtown Columbia, South Carolina. Hannah <laughs> and Kyle. So Kyle was the king of my heart, right? Um, and then this is the group of creators inside. We also got an awesome photo outside of the theater. And then notably missing is Ashley. She didn't come till the next day. So I'm going to go ahead and just Photoshop her in here for you. <laughs> there she is. And then after, or kind of at the end of the movie, we were all outside and Ty got the glam bot out. <laughs> And they were doing this stuff in the street. So uh, obviously Nikki looking fine and fab during her glam bot. And then I had to try and, um, you know, I think I look really fantastic right here. But then you'll see I literally like trip and fall because this is not my natural move. <laughs> yeah. Get it. All right. So we just finished at the movie and we're going to get stuff at Publix and just realizing that we look like this. <laughs> Nikki, you want to say hi? It's totally normal. Yeah, it's totally. <laughs> yeah, we're going to not stand out. It's kind of a cute little Publix. So just want to real quick, we're getting back from the TV night or the movie. We just went to the Ayers for movie. And so, yeah, Nikki, let's talk about how you are feeling. Nikki's driving, by the way. <laughs> um, how are you feeling this week given everything that is going on? So I feel it was quite serendipitous that we all ended up here together. Um, I do feel like it has doubled the amount of things going on in my brain at any given time. Yeah. Um, but just overall very, very excited. Yeah. What about the, um, like all the shit in all the different cities? Like, are you keeping up right now? Today I have not been able to, like I have people basically giving me that this is what you need to know. Yeah, exactly. Same. Jesse. Yeah, I almost feel like I'm being really bad and that I'm like opening messages and then I like can't, I just don't even have time to read them. I don't have like the mental capacity to take it in and so I feel really guilty, but it's just like, I want to know everything. I'm just like super. Well, and like I told you the other day, I feel like we're the ones, I'm the one that figures this out, mm -hmm. but I don't have the mental capacity to figure it out. I'm letting other people figure it out right now, yeah. but I'm having a really hard time doing that. Yeah, like letting go. Well, and yeah. Jesse, yeah, Jesse called me the other night, Nikki, and she legitimately I almost canceled my. She life. started it. She goes, "I don't think I can go to South Carolina," and I'm like, "Oh my god, what the fuck happened?" And mm -hmm. it was basically just like she's like, "I'm just so overwhelmed," and it was mm -hmm. all related to because I went to the out. hair salon. Here's what happened: I went to the hair salon, mm -hmm. I came out, and there's fucking murals going up everywhere. Yeah. There's um typewriter. We're getting words every day. Um, oh, it was when the pop up happened, and there's a pin in the globe, and then everything mm -hmm. hit me at once and I was just so overwhelmed and overstimulated and well I just... and we had to so that's the biggest thing though was like because we were talking about how you were at the salon in the chair right so you were essentially yeah. uh, you were stuck yeah, yeah you were stuck and then it's like then you had to pack we had to film that night like mm -hmm. that was for me it's like I think if it was a normal week I think I could have taken in more info like if we weren't like traveling and like even on airplanes today right but then it's like I almost question if I was not doing this if I would have um, just kind of eaten too much you know what I mean like just gone way yeah. too down the rabbit hole like I feel like it's kind of healthy it's right here on the corner actually right, Nikki. This one's right here I would turn around and then park right in front of it I'm just gonna back okay actually I'm gonna turn around so yeah I can make crumbs yeah so I kind of I decided I needed to let go like the stuff that happens when I'm in my classroom like mm -hmm. I can't I can't participate Mm -hmm. And with those, like the lyric thing, it's solved in 10 minutes anyways. Yeah. And like, yes, it would be fun. I think I got to participate once live before mm -hmm. some, you know, before I knew the answer. Um, 
And so I just had to let go. You know, it, it is what it is. It's fun that a lot of people are participating. Uh, that's where I'm struggling. Yeah, yeah. like, do you, do you feel like a race? Like, do you feel like, and uh, it's one thing to, like, say, oh, my head says one thing, but my anxiety says another. Because I feel like that's what Jesse goes through a little bit is, like, that just, like, anxiety to, like, be the first to the mm -hmm. chase kind of thing. I've kind of understood that sometimes when you're first, you make mistakes. Like, the other yeah, night, yeah. I just happened to be on my phone when she posted that, um, the manifest thing, the timetable. And... I made mistakes. I made a video and I made mistakes and I had to issue a correction video and you don't want to be wrong, you know? Yeah. Cause you'll go just as viral if you're wrong. <laughs> oh, a hundred. And then you get 7,000 comments that are like, you're an idiot, <laughs> which is fine. You know, I don't care about that. It's um, literally this house. Right yeah. Here. Yeah. So you can, and it, the, it, the TikTok market for Taylor Swift is so oversaturated right now too. Like yeah. there's so many people, which is great, but yeah. like in the same sense, it's, it's kind of difficult. Yeah, there's just a lot. I don't even think it's a lot of noise from other creators. It's like Taylor's putting out a lot of noise. Yes. Yeah. Like there's All just too much, too much, too much, too much, too much. And much there's also noise. part of me that's like, I don't want to make anything that's obvious because I feel like everybody else has already made it and I don't want to be redundant. Yeah. Well, so, you also don't want to be accused of seeing something and stealing right. it. Right. And I don't yeah. think that happens very often just because there's so many people. I mean, you can't do that. There's so many people. Like someone's going to figure out what you're right. doing. Like people are going to do the same thing. Right? Exactly. Right. So we are driving to the university. It's 9 a.m. I'm with Jesse and Nikki, and it is Thursday, April 18th, which means less than what, 12 hours? Oh my God. No, not less than 12 hours. I can't do math. It's okay. almost 9 a.m. So we've got, I don't know, with tonight at midnight, it's torture pose day. Nikki, how are you feeling? I am ecstatic. I'm, I can't believe it's here already. And we have a big day, so the day's gonna go quickly. Mm hmm. Um, and I just can't wait to hear all the tea that is spilled. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know. I have so many questions that I'm just ready for answers to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nikki or not Nikki, uh, Jesse, what about you? I am very overwhelmed. I am. This is the first time I've actually thought about torture poets since I woke up. Yeah. Cause but you're not feeling well today. So I, yeah, I'm lagging a little bit, but like, I know that like once 11 PM hits 1130, I'm going to be out of my fucking mind. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna be a maniac. Yeah. Can't wait to hit play. Do you guys think more is gonna come out today since Taylor's been like just killing us with clues? We could get something. Something's happening at 2 Unprecedented. Like, who knows? Oh, Nikki, you think 2 o'clock today? Well, there's a countdown on our website, 2 o'clock today. Oh, <laughs> look at how. That I think just really proves like how out of it I've been. Do you think like, she's gonna <laughs> drop Fortnite in the music video at 2? I don't know if we'll get, I don't think we'll get sound. Like, I don't yeah, think we'll get any indication of the sound of the album. Unless, it unless it's like the thing she did for the NFL last year. Ooh. With the like I feel video like, preview. I feel like it's weird that we have no point. merch. We have it's super no weird. No merch. Is that, does that mean there's more? Maybe they didn't want to do multiple drops because of the issues they had last fall and winter. Yeah, maybe. Or do they, I don't know. Well, yeah. I, to me personally, the UMG stuff is interesting with like people are talking about how she she's suing UMG is that correct? Oh, I there's a, there are this lawsuits. Shipping confirmation. For my order is on my way. What order? The for your vinyls? Yeah. <gasps> Yay! I've been waiting for that. Oh my gosh. I gotta look. Is it the signed vinyl? Uh, I'm not sure. All right, so we are very tired. We are very excited, and I don't know. When I woke up this morning, I just was thinking like this is like the most like just jam-packed week of my life um but knowing that tortured poets is here and i don't know i'm not even gonna do the math what is 9 a.m to midnight we're on eastern time this will be my first 15 hours 15 hours okay yeah. this will be my first taylor swift album release on eastern time so i actually yeah. have to stay out till midnight because yeah. i'm usually in central time yeah yeah enjoy that <laughs> normally we're early yeah it's not good. It's not good. Mm -hmm. So, all right, well, we're going to go to the university. We're doing a panel with the students and then we do this, like they're doing this group project. So we're going to pair up and work with like small groups. And then their assignment is to create a piece of content that will be judged tomorrow. So there's going to be like a series of judges there, like some people from the university. And, um, and then I guess the, for the next 24 hours, they have to create the content. After that, we're doing the costume panel. Then we've got what's going on. The tin roof we're doing that dance big party. Uh, dance, dance party, party yeah. guys this is gonna be the longest day of our lives we should do like we feel peppy right now we should do like a before and after i'll film oh when we're gosh. done <laughs> i think we're gonna be running on adrenaline all day yeah with all oh, pure adrenaline yeah 
adrenaline, fumes, vibes, all of it. So, Nosiness. all right, we're headed in. We'll see you guys in a minute. So here you have Nikki and I, and then Kenzie behind us. And we basically walked across campus from where Kate's office is to where we were having the little conference with the students. And this campus is stunning. Like this reminds me of a zoo. Like I don't know why a zoo. It's like where the animals, <laughs> but I mean the greenery and then you've got all of these historic buildings and just like sprawling courtyards. I am so glad that we had to walk across campus and just get that experience. And then here we are with our students kind of in our smaller groups talking about content ideas and part of their assignment. Jessie was running around with this Polaroid all week, so she got some good photos with the group. And then, of course, the two of us had to take a selfie. Um, so there's that. And then we had lunch at the McCutcheon House, which is a historic building on campus. And then we roll right into a costume panel with Kenzie, Ashley, and Hannah's designs. And they sat down and answered questions, which we'll get to here in a minute. However, I did take the opportunity during the setup to sit down with Ty and just kind of talk through how he's feeling. <laughs> okay, so I am here with Ty, Hello. Ty the door responded, um, and we are setting up for the girls are doing the event with their costumes. It kind of looks a hot mess right now because we're just in the university, but it will look really good later. But I want to talk to you a little bit about how you're feeling as a creator right now in this moment with TTPD coming out in what, uh, 10 hours. And then, oh um, we also have the, um, all the clues coming out and then we're here in South Carolina. So like we are going a hundred miles an hour. So how are you feeling? Like stressed is the first word that comes to mind. Um, yeah, not prepared, scared, um, terrified even, but I'm just, <laughs> I, I'm, I don't know what's going on. I feel like Taylor keeps releasing stuff and then I don't know what it is or what's, what her plan yeah. is. And it's like, we're all sitting here trying to pick up the jacks or the cards or whatever. Yeah. And people are like relying on us. Oh yeah. Too. Like yeah. there's people sending me messages like, I haven't seen you post in two days. And I'm like, I, don't know. <laughs> I haven't known what's going on in two days. Yeah. What would you be doing if you weren't here? Like, would you think, would you be like spiraling? Do you think you'd have it figured I think out? I'm spiraling while I am here. I don't think anybody can figure out what, I'm still trying to figure out what the twos mean. And I think, I don't know, yeah. the twos are the biggest mystery for me. Well, it's almost two o'clock Eastern time. So we'll be hopping on that. So this, this is pre in case we do figure out yeah. the twos. Yeah. That's before the merch drop. Yeah. So it's, uh, I'm hoping we get some lyrics revealed, maybe some Easter eggs in the merch, but I don't know. I'm just very nervous. How are you feeling in, in, in anticipation of the department? So I have taken a different approach. A lot of the creators here feel like their followers, and they, it's, this is valid, their followers are waiting for them to tell them what's happening. And I don't think my following does that as much. Like, I don't necessarily, like, give theories on the spot. Oh, thank, thank you. You, so <laughs> you need Stay some hydrated. water. Stay hydrated. Um, so my followers don't necessarily, like, wait for me when stuff happens. Like, I'll do theory videos of my own. Own and I definitely am in the know. Jesse is though. Jesse, somebody that yes. you know, because we've got the podcast. So the two of us combined, like I'm more editing, producing, and keeping up, where she's the one who's like solving it. So she's been really stressed. But for me, I'm just trying to keep everyone else calm. <laughs> You're just like, please, just be excited. I've been well. I'm just saying, I've been asking people how they're doing because I think that's one of the pieces here. With and I even had a comment on our Instagram the other day. The commenter had told us to take care of our mental health as creators because it's a really hard time. And I'm like, it was really nice that they recognized that that's an element here. And I said in the beginning of the vlog that I was telling them that I'm like, we are so privileged. So like, we are so privileged and we are so grateful for everything we got. So like when we complain about the stress or we complain about how hard it is, it has nothing to do with like, we don't want to be doing this or that, you know, it's really just to show you guys like the goal of this vlog is to do the behind the scenes of what it's like to be a creator during these crazy times, because you'll see the front of the house, you'll see the, all the videos, but like what, what is happening <laughs> while exactly. we're waiting for it? Well, so. like, there's all these theories going around that are so fun to jump into mm -hmm. and so fun to think about. And I don't know. I don't. I don't think we should worry so much about like guessing um, it. Yeah, about having to get everything right or about whether or not somebody like when I'm complaining about it. It's more about the fact that I've spent the last 22 hours clowning about something and only slept for three and we're <laughs> planning to be up until 3 p.m. tonight. It's not that I'm tired of Taylor. I'm just tired in general. Yes. Uh, yeah. No, I don't. 
don't know. Yeah, we're not tired of Taylor, to be clear. Um, <laughs> but, well, and I think there is, like, it's like there's more coming out. Now, we were talking about this last night. It, the overwhelm is, I think, part of the fact that we're in South Carolina, that it's the week of an album release. But I also think there's just more. Oh, there's more than ever before. Yeah. You know, the Eras Tour. We've had more albums in the past year released than she's ever released. I mean, there's more things to pull eggs from, too. Like, there's been more music videos and, and songs and even shit she says on the Airs tour, like, before she does her surprise songs. Like, all of those things could have been clues for TTPD. They could be clues for a double drop. They could be clues for Serpentine or whatever people are fucking talking about. And honestly, I don't know if we're going to get all of the answers tonight. No, no we won't. I'm, a, I'm an avid fan. Or not. I'm an avid believer in that. Like, that's why I'm trying not to stress on what I was telling jesse i'm like the finish line is not the album's release that's like just a marker in the whole journey like there's going to be more that happens after like this is the start of the era well i mean, guess they already kind of started Opening but yeah this is just one piece of it so I'm so excited but i can't wait till tonight we're gonna have so much fun at the listening party yes yes and we'll do content on that too but i appreciate you sitting with me. with me i mean we were, we were hanging out anyway but <laughs> i appreciate you having on camera with me and telling everyone just kind of how you're feeling because i do think it's interesting to see the other side of it well, so thank you for letting me come on i hope all y'all have an awesome awesome night listening to the album because i know we will and i hope y'all joined us um if this goes up afterwards this is going up afterwards so I hope I hope you had fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay so one more shot of all the glitz and glam so essentially the lover body suits to the left are all by hannah and then these three here are by ashley you have to keep in mind these are partially done so they brought their work completed and then some in progress pieces and then all the pieces I'm about to run through here, starting with this red dress over, are all done by Kenzie. This is high quality shit. An artist in motion right there. Look at that. Oh my gosh. All right, let's look at the table. I feel like I'm at a, um, like a museum. You know how there are museums that like will host like Diana's clothes or, you know. Yeah, I've always wanted to go to the Taylor Swift one in New York City right now. Oh my god. That's how I did my car. Look at this 1989 one. And the fact that it's here without any stains, Kenzie, that is hard work. Oh, so is this one in progress? Kenzie, is this one in progress? It is, yeah. I just started that one. You are such an angel. Yes, thank you so much. How much time do we have, guys? So real. Well, and I think you touched on it, but I was going to say in a situation like that, it's really about trusting the process. I think everyone up here can attest to that. It's like, trust the process. And if you need to take space from it, do it. Kenzie yeah. and I frequently have conversations when I get roadblock on my bodysuits um, because they take so long. And so I can feel like I'm doing so much work, like hours on hours on hours. And if I do a 10 hour day and I'm like, oh my gosh, I got 10 hours done. I'm still 90 away. Like it can be like, this is never ending. Um, and I had a little less pressure with this one because I was using it as my template for how long they would take. And so when I'm starting this one, I'm like, okay, but am I on time? Am I like at the same point I'm supposed to be? So there's a lot more pressure with that. But I have gotten to the point here recently a couple of times where I'm just like, I cannot make myself place another rhinestone. And we talked about it and we're like, okay, Maybe take take a break. take a break. Like that's listen to yourself. Close. Yeah, like and also you're you rock out with multiple of them, and so I, I can't speak to that. I'm so impressed by you all the time. Um, ADHD. But with mine, I I give my um, clients, I guess you could say, my Swifties, <laughs> um, a, a time frame that is longer than I expect it to be. Um, and I communicate consistently. So if I need that space, like they're super understanding. Again, it's it's a it's a, a work of art. It's like someone working on a painting yeah. or a mural or something. Like it takes as long as it takes sometimes. So you just kind of trust the process. Like I am with this one. I'm really critical of it. I don't have an exact photo to replicate like I've been doing for like this one did. I did. So going over here, I'm like making decisions that I'm like not sure I'm super happy with, but I won't know until I get way farther down in the process and then by then it's too late. I love the original so, ones. They're so fun. I do agree. I'm really yeah, excited like to try this that This one out. was like my favorite because mm -hmm. it's something that she hasn't worn. Yeah. Like she's worn half of it, 
So it kind of tests you a little bit, right? Because yeah. you're not just taking a photo and like making that exact thing. So I'm excited about it, but I'm definitely like getting that roadblock of like, you just kind of have to make make a decision um, because that way you can't keep going. So. Hannah, do you think that the roadblock that you're getting on the green one has to do with that? Like it's a creative freedom and you don't have a template or is it because you're building it for yourself and you're not prioritizing yourself or is it both? I'm totally not. Yeah, I think it's, it's both. Like I really put this one on the back burner and as much as I really want to, because I know that the people who are interested in what I'm doing, like have seen me do lower body suits. So I know that that's what they want to see. And so I feel a lot of pressure both for myself, like I want to have it ready and I, I'm excited about it. Um, I do think I have a lot more motivation to work on them when they are my own, but if it, it comes to default when I've got other ones lined up. Um, so I am thinking to that, I will take a break between the commissions that I've, um, yeah. I've taken, finish this one, be able to get that tutorial out because there are people who are waiting for it to be able to make theirs for Eras, um, and then taking on more so it's not as much of a... And then when I made my own outfit starting last year, people loved it so much. And my fiance, who's been super supportive, was like, you need to list this on Etsy because you can make a killing. And I'm like, are you kidding me? No one wants my crap. This is crap. I glued a bunch of stuff to a bodysuit. Why would anybody buy that? But they did. Um, so I just kept going. And that's kind of the style of my life is art. When I made this and it started to go viral, I was like, OK, well, I might not be the best costume designer, but I'm going to keep going even though this is really scary and really hard. So I kept going and kept going and kept refining. And a year later, this is where I'm at. Um, and if you look at some of the original stuff I made, it was like a bodysuit with sequins glued to it. Um, and, you know, as far as cost, there, you know, my, my end goal here is a little bit different. I want to be the designer for drag queens. Like, that is what I want. And I've got some amazing queens that I'm sending outfits to here in the next few months, including a queen who was in a Taylor Swift music video, um, which I'm very, very, very excited about. She's got a European tour. So my goal, we're going to get my, my best friend Sally and I make these together now. I brought her into it. Um, and we're making two pieces for her to wear in Europe, which so for me, it's not just the, the payoff of the money. It's I'm putting time into this. I'm putting money into this. They go anywhere from five hundred to fifteen hundred dollars, depending. But who's wearing it? Like I just sent um, a lover bodysuit like ten times better than this one. It hurt. It hurt shipping it off. And I paid a hundred dollars to overnight it um, to New Orleans to this queen. Um, her name is Taylor Summers, and she is up and coming, and she is incredible, and she's dancing in it tomorrow night. So that's kind of the payoff for me. Is these are the only two I have that belong to me because everything that I've made has been sold. Because when something goes out into the world, it's not just the money I get back. Um, it's the life it takes on, on stage and in different people's lives. And they'll pass it around to their friends to wear. Uh, that's a good question about like goals and what I want out of the page. A lot of this like the, my Instagram and stuff like that. I just have Instagram. It, all the, the growth and stuff that I've had, has, it's happened really quickly. So I feel like I'm finally at a point of like getting my feet underneath me and knowing and learning who I want to be and stuff like that online. Yeah. Um, uh, but I think long term, my goal is to uh, retire and move to the woods, <laughs> get some cows. Like that's the goal. I'm trying to like, I honestly don't even like social media that much because I just, it, you get sucked in and it's like you lose time you're like oh my gosh I didn't like look at a leaf today you know um and so that's my goal that's like what I'm trying to do with my my thing is do what I'm passionate about I already feel like a lot of my dreams have come true because when I was in your in these seats in college I was in college like two years ago I just graduated in 2022 um I was like I was so ready to get out I was like get me out I'm ready to do my dreams I'm ready to see um, what I can do with these skills mm -hmm. definitely took an unconventional route because when I tell my professors who I've become friends with now that like I sit home I sew my dogs are there we're just like like vibing um it's like it's just crazy to think like what you can do on instagram right how you can have an impact even though i'm in the middle of nowhere in a two-bed apartment two-bedroom apartment so i think i think the the goal and the dream for my growth and stuff is to just consistently um show up mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean post every day or whatever it just means be there i um, mean what that also means is to have boundaries that's why i'm not even on tiktok right now because i think you know putting 40 hours into a costume and then having to write the captions posted everywhere 
it would just, I would burn out. Like, so uh, just knowing my boundaries and stuff like that. And you know, you get better as you go. Um, and so maybe you're like thinking about having your own business and stuff like that. Just like assessing who you want to be um, in your business and also thinking about um, what you want to represent. Something I am so thankful. I'll say this before we jump into something else. Something I'm so thankful um, I established with myself um, before all this is I, I, I chose like a philosophy because I wanted to know who I wanted to be, but also why I wanted to do all this, right? And so, because I, when I had like 700 followers before I started all this, um, I decided I want to be as helpful as possible. I want to be as fair as possible. And I want to be um, as authentic as possible. Show up even if I'm not wearing makeup, don't feel like putting makeup on. I'm not gonna put makeup on, you know? Just show up as myself. And so, because of that, when I did make this dress right here, and I went to bed and I woke up and had like 2,000 more followers and blew up and I was like, you know, like- That's where I started following her too. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was overwhelming. Was my entry to Kenzie. Mm -hmm. It was very overwhelming, but because I told, I knew who I was in a way, I had my philosophy. It was not, I was not like, what do I do now? Like, how do I, yeah. you know, it's like, no, I know who I am. I want to do this. Um, and so that's what, that, that saved me. So if you're thinking about what you want to do, even if you want to go work for somebody, you want to be a part of a mission you believe in, just like know why you're doing it. Um, cause it, it's something I go back to because when you're on social media, when you're a girl in a room by yourself every day, sewing, you can go a little cry cry, right? When it's just you and your brain against it or going for your dreams and stuff like that. And so taking it back, you know, taking a breath and just be like, this is why I'm here. This is why, this is the impact I want to have. Yes, I want to make money, hello, but um, I have dogs, they need to eat. Um, <laughs> I got Westies, if you know, they're so cute. Anyway, like I have things I'm trying to do, but I also want to stay true to myself. Um, I think my other end goal is spreading awareness about autoimmune disease, because I have so many of them. And one in 200 kids are born with the disease I have. So 12 million views is 12 million views. But then they start scrolling my page and see the advocacy of, you know, children with these disorders. So, and I'll have parents reach out to me and be like, we took our kid in and got diagnosed. And like, I have 30 years of brain damage from an autoimmune brain disease that I didn't have treatment for. These kids can get treatment. The more that I talk about this, the more that these kids are drawn to my page, the more that their parents follow me. And then I'll talk about pans pandas, which is the disease. And that network gets more views. I get more views. Parents get the doctors and the research that they need, and it all kind of cycles. So it's Taylor Swift, but it's so much more than that, you know? Yeah, There's a lot going really on. multifaceted, which is something that, like, even being a part of this whole week um, with the workshops and stuff and meeting other creators, like, we do a lot, a lot more. Layers. There's, and there's, yeah, so that we could probably go on about that, so, yeah. All right, so we are back from the day at the college, and it was so great, so rewarding. I'm gonna throw up a picture of our group. Um, we worked with more creators, but Jesse and I snagged a little selfie with um, the group because they were doing their project, but essentially they had this assignment where they are gonna create like a video together, and um, then there's a panel of judges that will join tomorrow. So that was really fun, like talking to those students, and I mean, it went beyond just talking about like content creation and how to make a TikTok video, like we talked a lot about <laughs> um, we talked a lot about like just life in general and like you know they talked about like what they want to be and like some of the things that they're going through and so it was just like a great um, just kind of conversation for people like us who have not only lived good experiences but um, have kind of gone down a different path <laughs> you know like most of most of the creators here have major careers that they've either worked through and have been able to get out of through content creation or who are still working, right? And that's myself as well. And so just kind of being able to spend some time with the students um, was really great. And then... Okay, I have no clue what happened there, but here we are getting ready for dinner. Ty is beer from plastic cups, if you want to know why he's dressed like that. Um, and then uh, Jesse and I think Ashley, I'm not sure who all helped with this, but this table is very torture poets themed. So we had the whole place decorated, a little backdrop as well. Ooh, okay, I'm going to do one where it's like overexposed. You're overexposed. I am, girl. You have no idea. <laughs> I just got all that on camera. <laughs> 
So the tin roof was so much fun. We all obviously dressed in tailor themed costumes and I did have to steal some footage from the other creators here. Um, but there were tons of Swifties there and it just honestly was such a great cap to the night. But I will say one of the groups uh, that had an Airbnb, their car got towed. And so Kyle and a big group had to go to the impound lot. And I have to show you this. Brush out the slammer, bitch. We got towed. Yep. Not even two hours until TTPD, and we got towed. <laughs> Lovely. Also, keep in mind that Kyle was wearing this to the impound lot. But meanwhile, after they went and got their car towed, I do have some footage from Ty. <laughs> The dance party must go on. Ah, cuties! I love your hat! Look at her hat! I'm sorry, I'm on live. I hope that's okay. Oh my god, did you make it? Ah! Uh, I just love Ty so much. He is literally the cutest. Oh. All right, so we are within an hour. So it is 11.09 p.m. We are on Eastern time. So like this will be my first time listening to any Taylor Swift release or even like merch drops, anything like that, right on the hour because I'm typically in central time. So it's kind of like nice to have the extra hour knowing everything we're going through. But um, yeah, it's kind of go time. So I am currently editing and working through the KJ podcast. I actually had it edited before we came, but like there's just little tweaks. Like I just gotta like make sure I gotta transcribe it, which I use like a transcriber service. And there's just like all these kind of little details. So I'm getting that up right now. Um, and I just wanted to check in because it's been the craziest day. Um, there's just, it's just so much. I mean, it's so great. It's so great. Um, but it's a lot. I mean, the, this event was planned before Tortured Poets was announced, and I think had everyone, including uh, the professor and the school, known, they probably would have, well, I don't know, we probably would have been crazy enough to think we could have done it all, but um, if you guys have been messaging or anything like that, like, I, I physically can't, and it's not just me, it's everybody. I feel like my brain is just this revolving door, like I've said earlier, it's just like, information is just not being retained. I'm like looking at stuff, like people are sending me like screenshots and I'm like looking at it and it's like my eyes are blurred. Like I, I'm glossed over. I literally am so overstimulated. Um, so we went to the Tin Ruth tonight and it was a really fun event. I've never really been to like a Swifty, like, you know how they do those dance parties and stuff like even though it was like the creators were there it was really a swifty celebration dance party they had raffles they had fenders and this really cool uh venues the tin roof it's called here in columbia south carolina it was really great we had a really really good time um and so it's just it's like we came back and i'm like we all just need like 30 minutes of just quiet and i'm like quiet I'm gonna edit my fucking podcast and vlog so I really do uh I really do like torturing myself here but um I did want to check in because I know this whole bit is kind of the behind the scenes and I just wanted to be transparent like it's been great this has been an amazing experience but um this album release I feel like more than any other has been so driven with clues and <laughs> eat eggs and like even like the online creator space is much more saturated so like there's so many posts there's so many people trying to figure well my phone just ran out of storage which is really fucking good timing <laughs> really good timing so i that video cut off i deleted out my linkedin app my pinterest app like apps that i know i'm not gonna need for the foreseeable like 24 hours but i'm kind of freaking out because now i need to record for the the live so um, another thing to add to the list, I need to, after I finish this, take all of the videos, especially these ones that are longer form and put them on my laptop so they can be stored here, um, and delete them from my phone <laughs> because I don't think, I mean, I guess I can try and upload them to the cloud, but it's just kind of funny when you're on like different Wi-Fi and all of that. So, um, yeah, what time is it? It's 1113. Uh, we got 45 minutes and I got to figure out the speakers because we have six creators. I brought two JBL speakers. One's my friends and you can sync them, but I've never done it. So I got to 
figure out that. Um, but I'm so excited for Torture Poets. I don't even know what I was saying as that cut off. So I apologize if I'm like incomplete in a story there. Um, but it's just, I think that's a very good indication of where I'm at mentally. Um, I feel like I'm going to go home. Well, fuck, we got to make content for everybody. <laughs> I was like, I feel like I'm going to go home and sleep for days. That's actually, no, Marathon is just starting. Like this album is like, it's, there's going to be so much. And Jesse and I owe you guys that. We, we love our listeners. We appreciate every single one of you. Oh my God. And, um, so we're not going to not make content for the tortured poets. Um, so we will, we will be online this weekend. Maybe I'll sleep next week. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm going to finish uploading this episode. I'm going to figure out my phone storage and stop recording and making it worse here. And then I will, um, go figure out the speakers and this is me. <laughs> before knowing what tortured poets is like so um i should do a before and after maybe um but yeah we'll catch you on the other side so we cannot show clips where we are playing taylor's music because we have not licensed it so youtube wouldn't allow that so here we are just in silence you can watch us miserably listening to music we do have the full so long london clip on our website if you create a user you can access that and then we have tons of tiktoks if you want to see these with the actual music Okay, it's 3.42 a.m. And we only listened to the first part, the, the original songs on the album, excluding the bonus tracks. And we have to leave for the Airbnb tomorrow morning. We have this uh, second part of the like student event tomorrow at 9 a.m. It's 3.42, let me remind you. Um, we finished the first part of the album gosh we started at midnight it was like after two because we weren't even finished by the time the 2 a.m drop happened like we knew it was coming and stuff we still had a couple songs left just because we had so many technical difficulties because we were at the event super late and then um you know just didn't get hooked up and there's just like a lot um a lot of like just shit going on you know and I mean, honestly, when we get back from the bar, we all needed 30 minutes. So like by the time we were setting up, it was like, oh, it's midnight. So we got through all of that. We listened. I'm still processing it, guys. Um, but it got to a point like once the second drop, we were like, let's just take a little beat. Let's take a break. And um, a couple of the girls who aren't staying at this Airbnb, I mean, one of them just exhausted, right? And so, you know, we kind of were like, why don't you just go back and listen to it there? Um, and then we talked about like, maybe we listen here, whatever. And I'm like, I mean, Jesse and I looked at each other and Jesse's like, I can't do this. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm so overwhelmed and whatever. And like, to give you guys context, when I was just brushing my teeth, like before bed, I was like, what did I have for dinner? Like, what did I eat for dinner? And then I was like thinking back, I was like thinking about being at the university and what we had for lunch. And then I was like, did we go somewhere for dinner? Like, what was that? And then I'm like, oh my God, we're, we're at that fucking event at the tin roof. I like completely forgot. Like I've like literally blocked that out of my mind. And I think that's like my mental capacity right now. Like I legitimately, like I know you make jokes like, oh, I didn't even know what I had for dinner last night. No, like I don't know what I had for dinner. Like three hours ago like I forgot and I thought about it it wasn't like oopsie poopsie like I like thought hard and couldn't figure it out and I think that like really speaks to how much is going on this week okay I got cut off so yeah that just shows my mindset this week and my I got cut off because my phone storage is full I deleted out so many apps I'm just like going through and I'm like yep I don't need that app I don't need that app holy shit I need to check in my flight oh my god I need to check in my flight. I'm not flying Southwest, so it's not that big of a deal. But like, I'm just like thinking about, oh, the United app. And oh, oh my God. So guys, this is so overwhelming. I'm going to tell you, I got my beats on. I'm going to put them on. I'm going to listen to the second half. I might just fucking fall asleep. I don't know. Does it make me less of a Swifty? You, you can judge. You can judge. But um, it's just been a lot. It's been a big week. And again, that's not just Torture Poets. It's this whole creator event that just happened to fall in the same week. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely been it's definitely been one of the most jam-packed weeks of my life. And I mean, in the the guilt around not being able to reply to people and 
um, you know, people reaching out and wanting to hear my thoughts on things. Like, I love you guys. Don't, don't stop doing that. That is not a burden whatsoever. Um, but I feel guilty that I like legitimately can't take any more. I haven't, te I texted my husband tonight at dinner when I like at the tin roof, I like took a beat and I went inside the little booth that was kind of like set aside for us. And like, I almost started crying because I was just so overstimulated and I sat down and I texted my husband. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I've been texting you because he Oh my God, I got cut off again because I have no storage on my phone. So I just deleted a few more apps. Um, but yeah, my husband really, he lets me be like whenever he knows I'm super overwhelmed or busy, but he has reached out a couple of times and, and he's not like, what are you doing? But you know, he sent me some stuff. He sent me some pictures of the dogs and whatnot. And so I met, texted him and I was like, I am so sorry. Like, I'm so sorry. So like, if you're somebody who's left me a message this week, just know that like my own fucking husband isn't hearing from me. So, um, yeah. I'm looking forward to really just listening to this album on the airplane and starting to digest it. And uh, I don't know if I'll feel good about this for a while. I need a nap. Okay. Love you guys. Good night. All right. Friday morning, we are at the college. Here are some of the students with their prizes. And then Jesse and I popped into the bookstore and spent money on shit that we didn't need, but it was fun. And then Kate, the professor, took some photos of us. This is with Cocky, the mascot. And then, of course, we needed like the photo with our feet for like the aesthetics, right? And then the last photo we got was just in front of this beautiful mural just to kind of represent the campus. And then it was off to the airport. So we got there right as I was needing to board. So it was perfect, no downtime. And I was just glad to get home. Okay, so in the car, on the way home, and I feel like I legitimately, <laughs> I just feel like I went to another world and I'm like back in my real world. And I, I, it feels really fucking weird. You texted me, Dan, about the dogs. You said that Kobe was running around because you said mom. You told him that mom was here. I haven't thought about my dogs all week. Is that sad? They miss you. <laughs> they did miss me. Like, that's how fucking busy this week was. That's how crazy it is. I have literally so many inbox messages. Um it's just I mean so much has happened and I just had that realization where I'm like I have two dogs at home which are like literally my entire world they're literally my whole world so um yeah I'm just very grateful to be home and uh I think I'm gonna go sleep I haven't finished the album yet I still have two songs left um I have a lot of thoughts I've been texting with a lot of people um including Obviously, Jesse. Jesse and I talked when I was at the Atlanta airport. We hopped on the phone. I just like looked like a little fool in the corner with my AirPods in, just like <laughs> talking to the wall because I really wasn't trying to talk about a uh, controversial shit, um, you know, in the corner of the airport. I talked to KJ a little bit. I was texting with her. I sent her a seven minute voice memo. Gosh, look at me. I'm overloaded. Okay. So the brain is going to turn off. I did have an epiphany on the airplane that I never turned on the fucking TTP, the draft um, voting. Yeah, well, I haven't thought about my dog. So obviously I'm not going to be thinking about things like putting the form on the website where people could vote on the draft. So I have a list started for tomorrow. The first thing on the list is getting that up and then just getting all, I mean, I just have so much going on with my like my thoughts of things that need to come first and it's really hard to prioritize right now. So, um, yeah, that's where we're at. So I'm going to go sleep. Um, I don't even know if I'll, I, I gotta finish the two songs tonight. I'll finish the two songs tonight and then, um, I'll re-listen to the entire album again tomorrow and, uh, we'll go from there. So it's been a crazy week. I'm just happy to be home. This is the first episode after the tortured poets department has entered the world yes and we are not doing well no <laughs> like we are not gonna sugarcoat shit for you guys uh no. our mental health has spiraled like i was crying before we started recording so uh mm -hmm. just setting the stage <laughs> 